This video will deal with training needs analysis, sometimes abbreviated to TNA. So we'll look at training needs analysis. Organizations are constantly changing and adopting in order to meet the demands from customers and the environment. And these demands are constantly changing. We live in an ever changing world. There are new technologies, new products, new designs, new requirements by the customers and indeed new requirements by the technology that companies use. So there is a constant need for training and for specific training to address specific needs as a consequence of the changes that are going on in industry. There is greater demand placed on organisations to deliver training and learning events which incur, um, encourages continuous development opportunities. So organizations must factor in the need for training and get tooled up for effective training methods to ensure that their staff are effectively trained so that they are have the right competencies, the right training, the right abilities to be able to produce efficiently and effectively uh, and meet the requirements of the customers in terms of quality, delivery date and so on. In order to, to design training events, employees' ne uh, needs must be analysed to assess suitable training programmes. Uh, clearly, before the, the training event is organised, there must be some appraisal of what skills and competencies do the workers have or do the, the trainees have? What are, do they currently possess? And then moving from there into to trying to augment, to, to add to the, the package of skills and competencies already in existence, add to those so that the, the workforce become even more efficient and more competent. So TNA is an effective tool which helps organisations assess employee needs. It looks at what needs the organisation require, what, the, what it expects of its workforce, looks at what the workforce are currently capable of and tries to bridge the gap, tries to ensure that the workers are up to date. A successful organisation must ensure that effective training and developing, development is aligned with business goals and objectives. Clearly the training must point in the same direction as the strategic objectives of the business. If the business want to achieve certain things, clearly the training must support that. It must move the employees and the trainees in a direction that enables them to more effectively contribute towards the attainment of the strategic goals. If the training does not do that, then it is it's not productive in the context of the organization. A successful performance management system should recognize the development of the organization and the departments and the employees. So a successful performance management system needs to look not just at the employees, what skills and competencies they have got, but look at the departments and how the departments are structured and how personnel are deployed within the department. Is it a rational deployment or could people be moved and as a result more efficiencies could be gained? And indeed look at the organisation, look at the structure of the organisation, look at the layout of the organisation and consider the skills and competencies of even the senior management in determining what is efficient and what ways in which the organisation should be planned and laid out. Organisations, organisations must invest in resources that are targeted at the right training need and there is a return on the investment. As I said earlier it's important that the, the training programs try to meet the objectives and goals of the organization. And in that sense, there should be a return on the investment, on the training investment. That as a consequence of the training system, 
employees should become more skilled, more competent, more efficient, more adept at doing the job and therefore productivity gains and as a result there is a good return on the training uh, program. There's a good return to that investment. So it's very similar to an investment in a machine or in anything else uh, in, in a piece of land or buildings or whatever. It is a return on the investment except in this case it is improving the skills of the workers. It's in improving their competencies, their abilities to to work under pressure, to work flexibly, to work confidently and with good quality and under the constraints that the production system brings to bear on all of the organization including those in the offices who may be working in accountancy or in uh, communications or marketing or whatever so it's to ensure that the whole organization is moving in the same direction and there is a good return on that investment. Conducting um, a TNA is vital in today's workplace as the organization is constantly in evolving with new technologies, changes in legislation and working practices. Now I mentioned this really at the start of this video but it's worth bearing in mind right throughout that we don't live in a static environment the the working environment is changing it's changing radically as new technologies are introduced not just the the more avant-garde technologies robotics and so on but day-to-day uh, -day technologies in terms of machine design and indeed uh, computerization in the office and uh, greater understanding of the needs of people in the office and all of this leads to higher productivity but all the companies uh, are doing it they, they are interested in getting more productivity and therefore they're following this course of action which means the competitive environment will drive the adoption of more training and better understanding of the, the processes that are required within modern production systems and more specifically those requirements are related to the competencies of the operators who work within those systems so it's important that the the training needs analysis investigates what skills are currently in place and looks to see what can be put in place Essentially, a train for need, uh, sorry, a need for training um, arises when there is a shortfall of skills and abilities. That's the most extreme case. That's when the management can see that the workers simply can't do the job, can't can't do what's expected of them. There there are problems. There are uh, breakages and bad quality workmanship and and so on. Clearly, the the workforce are struggling to meet the requirements. And that's an obvious signal that training is required. Training can reduce or eliminate the skills gap and allow employees to fulfill their job responsibilities. So training can bridge the gap between what is required and what they are capable of. But that gap must be identified and the training program should be targeted at fulfilling that gap whatever it is it may be something to do with technical skills in terms of production or the use of computers or uh, whatever one of the, the more technical areas of the business but whatever it is it must be identified and a training program designed to bridge that gap so that operators and trainees who attend the training program will leave more capable, more confident and with greater capability of working within that organization. They will be more productive. Training needs must be evaluated in accordance to organizations objectives and these include profitability, the need to increase productivity or reducing costs to generate revenue. 
presumably, if, if we stand back from the organization a little and, and think about the organization, the organization is there to make a profit. And therefore, in a sense, everything it does is related to that. So if the workers do not have the skills and competencies required to do the job effectively and efficiently, then the training program is designed to bridge that gap, thereby making the trainees or the operators more productive and thereby improving profitability. It could be that the, the aim of the program is to make the workers more, uh, more productive and thereby cutting costs which will enable the organization to cut its product price which will make it more competitive in the marketplace and perhaps see a greater um, market share as a consequence. So it may take it as profit profits or it may take it as long run growth of the, the business as its market share uh, increases because it's now becoming more productive as a consequence of the training programs. Cost effective and quality services uh, customer retention, ethical compliance, innovation and technical advancement. Well, there's a list of, of terms and all of them are related to training. All of them are related to the ability of the workforce to effectively deliver on their own particular requirements. So the requirements could be to ensure good quality, to ensure effectiveness in production so the costs are kept to a minimum. It could be looking at customer retention and it could be looking at uh, the customer experience. So uh, customer relations management is important. Uh, it could be that the, the workers need to be trained in ethical compliance means don't waste resources, don't waste energy uh, don't abuse the planet. Don't, don't just simply commit resources uh, without thinking. It could be related to innovation, encouraging the operators to have the confidence to come forward with ideas. Perhaps the ideas are uh, are not acceptable, but at least they're coming forward with ideas. They're enthusiastic. They're interested, and they're bringing forward ideas about innovation and technical advancement. So the training system can encourage all of this. And all of this list of terms we've got here on, on point number two, these can be encouraged and developed using effective training tools. The survival and growth of the business, well, profitability, retention of market share and investment. Uh, these are also important within the context of training. Uh, the business will only survive if it's efficient and in a sense efficiency permeates the organization. It's not good enough to have one small section of the, the business efficient and the rest inefficient. Somehow all of the, the parts must be efficient and there should be a critical analysis of the efficiency of the different components of the business to try to generate overall efficiency. And where there is a deficiency, then a training program may be put in place. Once the gap has been identified, a training program is put in place to bridge that, that gap. The training programs uh, show that the company is trying to develop the operators, trying to help the operators, supports the operators, and it will therefore engender some sort of loyalty on the part of the operators. It will certainly improve the company image. The company will be known as the one that provides support and guidance and courses for their employees. It's a supportive organization. It recognizes when the employees have a problem, when there is a gap between the expectations of management and what the employees can actually do. It sees the gap and then 
tries to address the gap through training. Training needs involve, involve the following processes. First of all, monitoring of current employee performance through observation, interviews, self-assessment, skills audit, performance appraisal, and so on. There may be other techniques that are employed. So we can we can link to these. We we know that the the managers are in contact, let's say, with the operators. They have regular contacts, which are in a sense like interviews. They are getting feedback, they're asking questions and getting feedback, and they're they're judging the extent to which the workers are confident and capable of doing what's asked of them. But the workers themselves may self-assess and may, may request support. It depends, of course, how they see management. If they see management as supportive, they will honestly come forward if they require the support. If they see the management as, as quite aloof and, and remote from them, they may be more reluctant. It may be that uh, performance appraisal is used which means the manager may uh, meet with the say, operator and ask standard questions, ask for opinions and try to work out what the, the skills of the person was in a previous time period compared to now and look at what skills need to be uh, adjusted and developed. So. Uh, it's a monitoring process and that's how skills needs can be identified. It may be possible to forecast future shortfalls or problems that may require training and learning events. The managers are in a better position to know the direction in which the business is moving. They also know what the chances are, what the technologies that are on the horizon will involve? What will the technologies mean for the workers and uh, how well are the workers prepared to take on the challenge of the new technologies? So perhaps before the investments in new technology in the business takes place, perhaps the workers need to be trained, trained in advance. It's important to identify the training requirements and resources. Uh, it's it's important to consider how to best to provide the training for the maximum return. It's not just a question of having a training session. The training session should be well thought out, well planned and delivered professionally so that there are real outcomes at the end. It's not just a, a question of having a session within the business, within a local hotel or whatever, trying to uh, get the the workers, the, the operators to think about certain issues. It's a question of ensuring that the, the message is clear and understood and that the the workers or the operators understand what's required of them and it is achievable. It's within their capability. Don't ask the impossible. Training needs can be categorised. Um, first of all, training needs that can be anticipated. Sometimes the management, as I just said, knows what technologies are on the horizon, knows what technologies are going to arrive and may anticipate the needs, the training needs that will be required as a consequence. Sometimes the management know that the company is going to start producing a different product perhaps and it will be different training needs or it's going to enter a new market or a different market and perhaps the, the marketing section will need to be retrained. So the training needs sometimes can be anticipated. Sometimes the training needs simply come through from monitoring, from talking to people through the appraisal system as I just mentioned earlier in the previous slide. Um, so sometimes the training uh, manifests itself through contact with the operators or through observation of their work or through feedback about the, the quality of the work or the productivity of particular sections and how the productivity is varying over time. And this may identify training needs. 
Sometimes training needs arise from unforeseen circumstances. Sometimes um, organizations just encounter situations that, that were unanticipated. It could be, for example, uh, raw materials that arrive in a, in a company are not very good. The, the raw materials don't meet standards. But the company has to work with them because there's no alternative. Perhaps the next shipment of raw materials wouldn't be for weeks or months in the future. So they have to work with what they've got. This is unforeseen. So now the the operators have to be innovative, they have to be careful, they have to perhaps add in extra processes to bring the the whole uh, production process up to the required quality. They may have to innovate and change and think laterally. Now do the operators have the skills to do that? Are they flexible enough to do it? Can they flex to meet the requirements of these unforeseen circumstances. And this can happen in a variety of ways. It could be simply the government introduces new legislation and now the organisation has to alter the way it works. Can it, can it bend? Do the operators in the various sections have the flexibility to accommodate this? What sort of adjustment requirements uh, are needed? Training needs that can be anticipated, well, uh, for example, training needs identified in one department indicates a need for training throughout the organisation. Could be. Sometimes uh, one department makes a case for additional training in a particular, uh, related to a particular process. Well, that could be symptomatic of a need throughout the whole organisation. Perhaps the employees within a department don't understand the significance of what they're doing. They don't relate to what they're doing. Perhaps there's some sort of almost alienation amongst them. They're, they're just simply processing the work but not knowing what it does, where it goes next or, or how important it is. So there's a lack of motivation. Now that could be the case in every department. Perhaps all the departments are working independently and not presenting the, the whole picture. There's no corporate spirit. Now one department may have flagged that up. So now the senior management is aware, so now it would be time to have a training uh, program that shows how integrated the whole business is, not how separated out each of the departments are and how independent they are, but in fact how integrated they are. And that may lead to more motivation, greater loyalty, greater application, a more openness between the departments and a more openness between the employees and the management and generally a better working environment. Training needs should be considered within the, the, the context of the whole organisation. Um, if training needs can be seen within the, the context of the whole organization, then um, it, it, it limits the, the costs and it stops the duplication of activities. For example, uh, let's say a, a particular department needs a particular training course. Now, if a different department needs essentially the same training course, should it be developed from scratch again? Or could the materials that were developed for the first one be used, perhaps with some modifications, in the second one? Why duplicate? Why, why go back to scratch and develop a whole new program for the second department when essentially it requires the same training as the first department? So there should be some sort of coordination in the training program system to ensure that the, the programs are rational, they are well thought out, well presented, but they can cut across the whole organisation, preferably. So uh, at this, this moment you, you start to think along the lines of generic programmes which are applicable to the whole organisation and specific programmes 
which may look at specific detailed issues within particular departments. Now those can't be duplicated or replicated. These are specific to a department. But there are more generic ones which apply to the whole organisation and that's efficient to, uh, to um, save money and save resources. The introduction of new equipment, for example, or office software can result in a need for a training event. Staff may need training on operating equipment. Uh, when new equipment arrives, the staff will need training. Otherwise, there is a divide between the piece of equipment and the people. They will perhaps sit looking at each other, uh, wondering what to do with this piece of equipment. But to have a skill and a, a fluency in the use of the equipment which leads to greater productivity will require training. Sometimes organisations may have a high volume of customer complaints and this means that perhaps staff need to be trained in customer care and there may also be a need for more training regarding quality uh, throughout the organization and the need for quality throughout the organization. So the staff who deal with the customer complaints will need training to make sure they're able to politely and effectively deal with the complaints but also to avoid complaints arising in the future perhaps there should be training related to quality and good workmanship and uh, offering a good service and a good product to the, to the customer and uh, that should be trained throughout the organization also. Training needs that have been identified through monitoring. Well effective monitoring systems can be in place to identify training needs. Monitoring can take all sorts of uh, routes. It's possible to conceive of monitoring in different ways. Organizations um, can use systems such as variance analysis to identify training needs. For example, unexplained budgets can detect shortfalls and training programs can be put in place. Companies tend to run by the use of budgets. There is a master budget and then there are departmental budgets. And variance analysis simply looks at the, the individual budgets, looks at what was allocated and looks what the actual amount spent was. Now that could be an indicator of some issues, some training issues are required. Training issues in budget management, that's most fundamental, but also training issues in um, amongst the whole department to, to try to meet the cost levels anticipated in the original design of that budget. Try to anticipate the outputs that are required and the resources required as well. Um, so variance analysis which crops up in the areas of finance and there is a separate video on this on the course but um, that is uh, an issue that needs to be uh, looked at because it may indicate the need for some sort of training. Of course performance appraisals, surveys, self-assessment, employee interviews and exit interviews are all methods for assessing training needs. All of them feed back information to the management and indicate where training can be effective and where training is required. But there are all sorts of ways of, of identifying the need for training. It could be just simply by observation. Management looking at the, the work processes in practice and seeing operators struggling perhaps to complete certain tasks or perhaps the machinery is not perfectly synchronized and or the machinery is going too fast or too slow or uh, workers have problems in moving from place A to place B or whatever it is. So there are whole areas that need to be taken into account. Areas of, of observation, areas of let's say dealing with the people and interviewing them, having performance appraisals, exit interviews, when people are leaving the organization, talking to them about their experience. This is a time when operators are very open and honest. 
I mean they are leaving the organization and this is a time when they will perhaps want to help the organization because they want to help their colleagues keep their jobs um, so assuming they're leaving under good uh, in good relationship with the management they will want to feedback openly and honestly and that might be a valuable source of information about where training is required now training needs from unforeseen circumstances well um, changes in legislation and government can impact on organizations and the need to invest in training programs generally speaking companies know that the government's considering a change in the law governments announce it a long time in advance and to get legislation passed takes some time it has to go through the parliament and it has to be drafted and it has to be debated and so on um, so there is normally some time to adjust but uh, when the government announces some change that will affect the business the business may need to have training programs and uh, implement different routines and perhaps create additional positions or or move additional positions or close some existing positions uh, and reallocate the staff uh, in other words there is an adjustment process that the companies must undertake in order to meet the requirements of the new legislation and to do it effectively there may be the need for some training of course new technology gives rise to training um, employees need to be adept at uh, the the you or in the use of new technology they need to be adept in the use of all of the functions of the new technology to ensure that they exploit all its possibilities and they are most efficient and to do that they need to be trained people are not born with these innate abilities they, these are abilities that are trained and the company needs to train its workers to ensure that they can use the equipment be it computers the local area network um, some communication systems perhaps accountancy packages or it could be technology on the shop floor in engineering uh, computer aided uh, lathes or milling machines or um, the use of lasers or whatever it is but there certainly needs to be training to ensure that the workers uh, can deal with this new technology and deal with it effectively Of course, competitors can co also cause be a cause for training programs. Competitors are not standing still. Competitors within an industry uh, are competing for the customers. They're competing on price, on quality, on design, and so on. And they're innovating and changing and constantly trying to get their workforces trained and retrained and uh, make them more in innovative, more productive, more efficient. So there is a competitive drive to make sure that training programs make sure that the employees within an organization can outcompete the competitors so in in this session we've looked at training needs analysis and we've looked at some of the issues associated with training needs analysis and that's all we're going to deal with in this video so we're going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching